Hey everyone, Genome here, coming to you with my next uh, installation slash how to slash video arcade video. Uh, in today's uh, episode, I'm going to be taking a look at something I just arrived today, and that is none other than the Legends Pinball Arcade Control Panel. I talked about getting this for my uh, At Games Legends Pinball Machine here for a little while. It went on sale the other day uh, when they were doing the 4K uh, push sale, basically, and I went ahead and purchased it. This is what it looks like outside. And I got it for a hundred dollars. Got the trackball on there, the joystick. We're gonna be getting rid of this. What I've talked about pretty bad before is the upper control panel with just the D-pad on it. And we're also getting rid of the uh, Legends Pinball branding, which is always a plus. Uh, my initial thoughts on this, real quick, before I show you how to install this, are it's okay. Um, the buttons feel really good, like really good, just as high quality, if not better, than the Legends Ultimate uh, buttons, which actually are obviously a step up from the other arcade one-up stuff fair. Uh, it has an octagonal gate on there, which I find kind of interesting, considering you probably be playing vertical games on there, so you probably won't need octagonal, but you can always change that. I have several more to choose from. Uh, this panel is clear, and it's been often like chided for its cheapness or whatever. I don't really care. It's gonna keep the dust off there, and it's kind of cool, actually. You can see what's going on in there. But uh, So basically, I'm going to be replacing this control panel right now, show you how you, to do it. It's supposed to be very easy. In fact, all you're supposed, to, you're supposed to need, according to the instructions, is a screwdriver, Phillips head. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Make it so, Mr. Wolf. Okay, the first thing we gotta do is remove these uh, quick retaining panels. Uh, three screws in the front, and I think there's like five or six on the side. So we're gonna do the front and back real fast. And you could use power tools for this, I suppose, but sometimes the manual touch is just better. That's true. All right, there you have it. So make sure your power is completely off before you go mess around the control panel and we'll be taking off the screws here next. Make sure to save these screws that come from your old control deck because I did not see them coming with the new unit. Okay, carefully remove that. And we have a USB cable that looks to need to come off, and one other connection here. Okay. There's another connection in here, I don't know if you can see this, that um, run the haptics here. So make sure to disconnect this too. And it should just pull right out. There we go. All right. I'm actually gonna take this opportunity to pull the glass out and give it a clean because mine has like this residue. I don't know if it shows up here, but it's pretty kind of filthy actually. So I'm gonna clean the underside of this real fast. Be very careful when you're doing this. Good time to clean your monitor too if there's any schmutz on there. There was a few little areas. Just don't leave behind anything else that wasn't there before. All right, so let's go ahead and put our glass back in. And once again, if yours isn't dirty, you don't have to do this. Mine just had that oily residue inside, which was really bothering me. And so that looks better. Okay, so now we're gonna be putting the new panel on. So let's look for our connections here. which are handily taped up on the unit. Just pull them right out. And here, let me get this pulled in closer for you here. And it looks like here's the USB port and here is the, uh, the haptic port here, so. Okay, so get your unit set up here. Let's hook up your haptics cable again. And it looks like all we have to do is actually put the USB cable into the unit now. I don't think we have to attach that other ribbon cable. Doesn't say anything about that. Make sure you're all hooked up. There 
and we should be good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and test this real fast to make sure it works before I put the rest of the top on there, but we should be just about done. All right, looks like we're working. So I haven't got to test out the trackball yet, but I can't imagine why it wouldn't work. Let's just make sure I had all my flippers and everything works still. I can feel the haptics in there. Okay, flippers are working. You got nudge buttons here. They also work here. Okay, so it looks good. Let's get the rest of the seated down and put it back together and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so here's some Akari Warriors. This is an isometric game, this is what I wanted to play. Oops. But, appears to be working just fine. Forgive my playing here, I'm just kind of screwing around. Just. But all right, so there we go. Let's try another game real fast. Well, let's see if we have a bowling game here. Sorry about the reflecting light in the glass. seems to work so of course I'm not going to be uh... all right but anyway don't know how to play the game but it appears to be working and loud Okay, so it's time to give you some uh, initial thoughts and impressions, so stay tuned. All right, so the unit is installed, played a few things on it, everything appears to be working fine. Um, first initial impressions, first off, the installation could not have been easier, it's literally 15 minutes of your time, you take off what, 10, 13 screws, and if you count those, you know, inside, 17 screws total, all you need is a Phillips head screwdriver, it was right, nothing wrong with it. Uh, took the opportunity to clean my my backplane glass, or not backplane lane, but my uh, glass here, which it needed to be done anyway. Uh, it fit just fine, no problems lining everything up. Everything feels of good quality. The roller bar uh, feels good. It's not like too loose in there, like sometimes these can be, these track balls. Uh, buttons feel excellent, like I said before, uh, and they all work. Um, and it's so nice. Oh, look, I'm number seven. No, not quite seven. Um, I'm still learning where the button layouts are. I think B is rewind, okay, or maybe enter, I don't know. I'm still learning whatever it is, but it's nice not having to, to go with these these two buttons down here all the time. Um, so yeah, it feels really good moving around the menus with the joystick, much better. And honestly, uh, for a hundred bucks, I think this was a, a great value. And it's gonna add uh, some good <clears throat> replayability to the unit, because now I can play isometric games on here, which like centipede and things, which is great, that's what like, this huge screen's gonna be great for. And it, it's just nice to have not that little D-pad anymore. So yeah. So anyway, my final thoughts on this are, I think it's a really good upgrade. I think most people who wind up getting these tend to love them compared to what they had before. And uh, what say you? Have you ever dealt with this upgrade before? If you have, what are your thoughts about it? And if you haven't, or would you be interested in doing so now? This uh, unit is available for both the uh, this legacy model here and the newer 4K model as well. Uh, but it's no longer on sale. It was half off basically for the sale. So 100 bucks, normally it's about a $200 job. So uh, I think 130 bucks if you were the LPL member. So yeah, I think this is a really good upgrade and it's definitely a long time coming and anyway hope you enjoyed hope this was helpful in some way and until next time this is genome 
<laughs> still boggling and ogling the fact that there's a joystick on top of his pinball machine out.